So this is day two, and I've taken all the stickers off the plastics, and also felt like trimming that. Um, I just think it looks a little cleaner, and I kind of really want to show off the motor a little bit more. Um, I did take off all the brakes. These are all the items that I'm not going to be actually painting or doing anything with. Um, also, uh, I have everything for the rear over here and everything from the front. And if you look in here, you can see uh, I keep my bolts kind of separate. You never know. They could just be just slightly longer, slightly shorter, and you end up with some problems. All right, so headed over here. Uh, there's a, the front fender. I'm not sure if I'm going to do any kind of painting on these. Um, really need something that can flex. And I'd hate for it to just start peeling. Um, this piece is all painted ready to go. Um, I got to actually slot these so that way I can tighten up the chain. I didn't think about that so um, we'll have to punch a couple more holes for that and shoot a little of paint in those holes so we don't have any rust in the future. Here are the bolts and what I did is put some paper towels in the middle of them to not get paint in the threads. Uh, these are actually long enough I could just kind of hold them and you know give them a little dusting. No big deal. And here is the frame. So it's all painted, I painted the bottom, and then flipped it over, and then painted the top. And I'm going to give it probably a day or so, just so I can make sure it's nice and hard. And I don't, you know, scratch it because it's fresh paint and hasn't really fully, fully cured. But, yeah, it's looking pretty good. Let's see if I can get a close-up of this texture. And then, some flaws. Eh, you won't see that. Yeah, it looks pretty good. It's like a nice, smooth, soft black. All right. All right, so over in this direction, we had the wheels. They were in pretty uh, rough shape. It had a lot of rust. Um, I did my best to scrape off anything that was loose. Um, scored it with some Ospro, and I'm gonna have to wait till tomorrow to do any painting on this. So we'll be painting this with a, a epoxy black appliance paint, which is really durable. Um, but it's shiny, so it'll kind of um, look a little bit better. It's going to make the wheels pop out from the frame a little bit. And I'll try to get a close-up of the wheel. So, yeah, it'll look much better tomorrow. <laughs> All right. So I want to do a quick video on the battery pack and BMS management system that I'm using for this guy. This is a kind of oversized, but it's just what I had. It is a 400 amp, 160 amp continuous 8S through 20S BMS. So 8S would be this guy over here, which is a 24 volt pack. Uh, a 20S would be a 72 volt pack. Right now, this is being used as a 14S lithium ion, which is a 52 volt pack. Um, all these wires feed into the pack on each series connection. So this is going to be um, cell number 14, and on the other side in the middle would be uh, 13, and then over here you would have 12, 10, and then eight, and on the other side you would start with the negative going up, and this would be your main negative, and this will be cell number three, cell number five, cell number seven. And this pack is merged on the back side, as you can see right here. Each one of those is where I kind of had it connected and folded it over and turned two packs into one. So this is actually two 7S packs right next to each other um, together to make a 14S 52 volt pack. Now I don't want to make this video too long, but this is a 26650 LiPo 4 cell. Your, your range is 2 volts to 4.1. Recommended not to go over 3.65, but it can go to 4.1. You want to stay in between 2.5 to 3, 3.5, 3.65 on these cells. These cells will charge up and then kind of settle down a little bit. Sometimes you'll get it to settle about 3.4, 3.5. These are rated at 2.5 volts up to uh, 4.2. Do not want to go over 4.2 or you'll have some issues. 
recommended 3.2 volts to about 4.1. Now it's called a 18650 cell because it is 18 millimeters this way and 650 millimeters this way. This is a 26650 cell, same thing. It is just wider this way, but the same length this direction. It's really weird is how they look. This looks like the negative of the of this one, but it's actually the positive. They're actually kind of backwards. So the negative on this one looks like the positive on this one. Can be very confusing. This one here is, is very, very powerful. This is only 2.5 amp hours. This is 3.2 and a higher voltage. You have way more energy dense in this, way more power on this. This can spike to 120 amps and can do about 50, 60 amps continuous. This can do 10 amps continuous and spike for about uh, 15 amps or about 10 seconds or so. So this guy is, you can't really shove a whole lot of energy inside like an e-bike or something like, or anything like that. So they normally use these because you can fit more energy in there. And once you start putting these together, you start having more and more power. So say this is 10 amps. Well, I got three in here. So now we can do 30 amps continuous and 45 amps uh, peak. Uh, this nickel strip is way stronger and something you would use for a pack like this for e-bikes as this one is safer this style is safer but you have to squeeze all the energy through that little tiny fuse link which kind of holds back a lot of the power it's more of a safety feature than more of, and this is more of a power feature this is what you would normally find on a lot of e-bike batteries this is 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 kind of a new new thing um, i recommend it more for like power walls or if you're pulling low amperage out of a much bigger pack. So this pack should be able to do 90 amps continuous, but I only trust it to, to do about 40, 45, because the nickel strip will get hot because it has to run through that little strip. All right, and this guy right here is two thirds of this pack, but I completely rearranged. It's kind of like this guy right here, which is a 52 volt pack. But this one is two of those put together. So this little pack right here can power a golf cart. Um, 300 amp peak, and it can do about 100 amps continuous. Uh, 58 volts fully charged up. And I actually have XC90 connectors on both sides um, to try to utilize and get all the power out of this guy as I can um, without sacrificing any kind of voltage sag or these connectors getting hot. They're called XC90s because they can do 90 amps of uh, amps um so now i have two one on each side we're looking at 180 amps um it should be fine for what i'm going to be using i'm not really going to be pushing this thing to 300 amps uh, i'll probably be doing about 200 amps this is going to be for my mx650 build that i will be doing in the future Alrighty. this is the end of day two of the sx500 rebuild and i have gotten the frame all finished off and painted and I decided to go ahead and paint the controller, the motor, rotors, and calipers. I have cleaned up the uh, plastics and I'm considering painting them. We'll see tomorrow. So, here's a little close up. Now this paint is a little hard to, to spray. You gotta kind of spray a white backing to it and then clear it and I still wasn't getting a really good color, so I had to shoot it with some more clear, and then I'd shoot more of the <clears throat> Rust or Craylon uh, fluorescent green. And the reason why is because this actually glows in the black light and also under certain LED colors. So when I put the LED kit on here, these items are going to glow um, like they're radioactive. And over here will be the wheels. Um, I said I was going to paint them tomorrow, but I got impatient, so I cleaned them off and sprayed them. And I actually forgot I wanted to weld the freewheel. As I have a brushless motor, I would like to get the regen. Alright, so other than that, we'll be looking at tomorrow. I'll be wiring everything up, mounting the battery, and hopefully going for a test drive and see how fast I can get this thing up to.